Hello everyone and welcome to the Rendezvous with Simon Show. Uh, today we're having a motivational chat show with one of the most inspiring and motivating barbers in the industry. Simon is the global artistic director of War UK. He is very innovative and he has a fun approach to uh, barbering and education. Education has been the trend recently, especially with everything happening. So Simon today is going to give us a brief about what has been going on. And uh, he's known for his passion towards education, designs, deve and developments. Uh, he has hosted lots of wall seminars and courses. Uh, therefore, I'm sure that everyone will be learning uh, a lot from Simon today. And it's going to be a spontaneous and fun talk uh, together. Hello. He hello, Simon. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Uh, we're, we're lucky to have you with us today. Uh, so happy to see you and uh, and uh, and to and to listen to what you have to give to us. And um, uh, first of all, how's it going? Uh, how's uh, how's it going recently? Well, look, obviously, I think everybody's feeling this globally, um, especially from an education point of view. Things aren't. Too, there's no point uh, trying to make it sound better than what it is. Um, it's different to what we've ever experienced in my lifetime and certainly my professional career. But look, we have to move forward. Uh, I think we're doing the next best thing in terms of working on things like virtual education. I think we're working on potentially new ideas for 2021. I do think it will return back to some normality soon. Um, but for the time being, I think we're doing the best we can uh, and trying to fetch the best education, the best entertainment to the hairdressing and barbering community to some of the stuff that we're doing. So. Uh, you know, it could be better. I could be in Dubai with you guys, but um, we're not there yet. <laughs> True. So we're, we're here to have a chat with you. Uh, uh, we are here uh, with the education and, and artistic team uh, in Wall, and we have a lot to ask you and yep. a lot to learn. <laughs> so we need some motivation as well. You know, it's been it's been a tough time, and especially for the for the guys uh, in, in, in the in the barber shops and whatever they are facing with their customers recently new trends and new behavior and uh, everything seems really so new and i think they have a lot to ask you and we need lots of motivation no pressure then <laughs> so tell us uh, how, how many how many advices you've been giving for the recent uh, few months I, th I think in the beginning of lockdown um so obviously march end of march beginning of april it was just um just things through facebook and things through your instagram and uh probably every friday i would do a message to say to everybody you know do the right things don't be cutting air at home don't be cutting in salons and then i was very lucky to be picked up with the british barbers association i was asked to start off um a co-host a chat show called barbers arms which um, up to this Friday, we've done 24 episodes. So um, in, in a view of how many people we've reached, um, probably just shot 4 million views so far over lockdown. So every week we've had to give out the right info, uh, talking about sometimes legislations in different countries, where the governments are with different countries, try and do that humorous, motivational, have some fun while we've been doing it, and also as well, making sure that people have got a little bit of hope and um, giving them a little bit more of a... a some, some weeks it's been quite doom and gloom. And so you've got to try and pick out a little bit of light in that area. Um, there's no point saying, look, guys, I've got no good news. We're all in the same boat together. Good, good, good luck. Make the best man win. You've got to try and pick out little bits that sometimes people can grasp onto. Um, and, and, and I've just done that myself as well, and personally, you know, not travelling not being able to do the things that you would normally do. I've had to pick up the little bits that just keep me motivated and and keep me working and moving forward. Especially for, with, with someone that is like you, you're so active and uh, and uh, you're everywhere. Yeah, I mean... Motivational and you're everywhere. Uh, um, I think from, from my point of view, you know, one of the things that uh, is important is that when you are everywhere and you are going out to meet people, one of the things that you miss, I mean, this this week in the UK, for the next three days, I'm doing a, a presentation for a big consumer group. That's normally done live in a big 
conference place. So this year I'm doing it in front of a camera in a studio. What you miss at that is when you come out of those theatres and studios, everybody's saying to you, oh, well done, that was the best show we've seen this year. That was so funny. It was so motivational. So almost like your ego has not been stroked for months and months. So it's addictive and uh, you miss that fix as well. Um, did you find that with doing all the online, when you were chatting online and doing the, say, the Barber's Arms episodes with the barbers asking you questions on even how to evolve at home through the different haircuts, uh, how they can train at home? Um, yeah, I think, I think we've had a few of that. Dan, I think there's so much education out there. There's yeah. so many people being shown how to, to do a fade and to do this side of it. What we've tried to do this weekend is, uh, Trevor's done a great job of putting a global presentation together. We've tried to come up with something a bit different. Even if some of the cuts you've seen before, it's the way it's packaged up. Yeah. And I think one of the things I've tried to do to everybody is to look, pick what's right for you. Don't don't go down this road. Don't put your all your eggs in that basket. And I think moving forward with education, I think there's been that much done now online. Yeah, that that's Everybody true. before lockdown, everybody's now become a chat show host, an interviewer, <laughs> a blogger, because um, that's all that's been done. But I think what will happen is the best will survive and the others will just go back to what they were doing normally. We yeah, want to be in right that then. position where we're around and we've survived it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right there. Um, during the lockdown, I had a friend's family calling me, asking me how to cut their own hair. Um, and a lot of what I was saying to people was to actually look at the different YouTube videos or even a lot of different channels. And some people were doing it good. Some people were making a horrible mess. It's yeah. quite entertaining. Um, I think... You know, from my point of view, I've been surprised with some people. Some people's done some really good haircuts. Obviously, from our brand's point of view, we're all wall professional, but obviously, wall is a global company. We manufacture not only professional clippers, but consumer clippers, animal clippers. So, we all know internally within the wall business how many clippers that we've sold over lockdown because people have become professional home cutters. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I've been surprised with a lot of people how good a job they've done. If this had happened 10 years ago, you'd have seen some real disasters. Oh, yeah. I think I there's that much that. tutorial online that people can easily access. Then I think as an industry, we need to look at that to say, look, out of this, some barbers have been really busy when they've come back into the business, but some are feeling a bit of a lull. And I think yeah. the lull is that people are still doing themselves at home. Um, and I think that yeah. is where we need to fetch it back. So I think what we have to do is we have to regulate before you put a cut on to uh, any social media, just think about who's going to watch it. Think yeah. about what you're going to... If it's just about your ego, think about the industry. Because the, just an ego trip's great. But what are you selling? Are you getting clients into your business? Are you selling a brand, a, prod a product? Are you selling... Do you just want views? But you've got to bear in mind that if your clients watch you do a cut at home and you're showing them how to do it, then... They're going to use it, yeah. yourself out of business. So just be choosy what you put out online. My, in my view, anyway. Yeah. So yeah. What we found out. Like yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Um, all right. Um, I heard you speaking about uh, new ideas and uh, motivations. Could you tell us briefly what keeps you motivated all the times, or what are the new ideas you'll be um, coming up? So soon? I think there's nothing scientific sometimes about. The, I think a lot of people think sometimes that. I spend lots of time on the creative ideas. I'm coming up with real big ideas. I'm very lucky that sometimes I feel I, I work better under pressure. So when I'm under pressure, that's where within a 24-hour period, I can come up with an idea or a concept that looks like we've spent months planning it. And I've been very lucky that way. Uh, oh. That motivates me. I think the other part of motivation is the fear of losing, the fear of not doing it. So tonight, I will go into an hotel oh. tonight. I'll have my products in front of me that we're launching for the fourth quarter at Boots. And I know I've got 30 minutes live on camera Wednesday, Thursday in front of 700 people. So I will practice my presentation 
for the next 24 hours till I get it so it flows. And I think that's my difference is I've always had that real good uh, attitude to think, right, I've got to do this. I see so many people turn up to exhibitions, Kassan, or a presentation, and you'll know this, Dan, is if you don't know your product, I always say this to any hour presenter, Sarah, is if you don't know your product, I can see it one million miles away. I can walk yeah, in the yeah, room and sniff you out if you don't have that product as if it's like part of you. It's like using your little finger. Um, yeah. And so one of the things that keeps me motivated is obviously the fear of not doing well, the fear of not being able to, to do that. And, uh, and then right. to keep me motivated is, is knowing that you're putting the hard work in, which then really pays off when you do the end result. Right, right. That's great. And working in the Middle East here, do you think that you can give us a little bit of tips? Because what we are facing at the moment that people or clients in general being really picky with their um, demands or requests, being watching all the time how we are cleaning, disinfecting our clippers, the chairs. And sometimes, sometimes they go a little bit too far and they ask something like, could you use for us a plastic cape or... You know, do you have some yeah. tips for that? I think, first of all, my first tip here is to protect yourselves at all times. Yeah. First job. It's a bit like boxing. Protect yourself at all times. So you need to make sure that you, you've got the right PPE on, your mask, a visor. In the UK now, it's a mask, and if you wear glasses, you're okay with a mask and glasses. Um, but it was up to that. It was a, a mask and a visor. Uh, some places you have to wear gloves. Um, things like hygiene spray, blade ice, uh, making sure that you've got the time in between customers to clear that area down. And your clients visibly see you spraying the chair, spraying all your products, things going into barberside, a couple of sets of kit so you can change one onto the other. Whereas before, I think clients just wanted to get straight into your chair. I think now they're quite happy for you to do a little show of this is me clearing all this area down now and then fetching them back in. I think that would be a tip that I would have is tell people there's no rush here now. That gone are the days where in, out, in, out. You've got to make sure after one client, everything's cleared down, you feel hygienically good, but you, you first and foremost, you as the barber or the hairdresser is protected first. And then your clients are going to be double protected if you've done all the precautions properly. You guys, what if, I think you guys are a bit in front of everybody else when it comes to IG. Yeah, what I found is as well with that, um, we obviously have municipality come in and check, uh, they check all the barber shops, and I think from it was just after Ramadan, we've been using plastic capes, gloves. But back onto what you're saying about protecting yourself, what I found is over here, what we've been doing is even if you've cleaned the station down. When your client comes in, put on a little bit of a... It will be another show, as if you're cleaning everything down again. And it... They feel a lot easier when they sit down in the chair. Even yeah. though you've already cleaned everything anyway. I, 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 I'm I same as you. I think that that you can't do too much hygiene. Yes. Yeah. To just know, in this, in this particular current environment, there's absolutely no way that you're going to get criticised for doing too much uh, PPE. I know Gary, who does the co-host on the Barber's Arms, you know, his business invested thousands of pounds on disposable gowns, but it's yeah. not just a disposable gown, he's had his logo put on, and that's still <laughs> thrown away, but he's just taking that extra step. So I do believe the people who have done it right will survive. The people who do it right will still be here in six months. What we're finding in the UK, and I'm not sure about you, is... The barbers that shot up everywhere the last three or four years. Some all dropped off a bit. Dropped off. And they always used to say, an old-fashioned saying was, a recession will get rid of the rubbish. Yeah. Well, this pandemic has caused some financial restrictions. And what yeah. we're finding is some people who probably haven't done the right thing, probably didn't pay their proper taxes and things. So when it came to handouts from the government, they couldn't prove where their income was from, so they, they got nothing. Yeah, um, those are the ones that struggled, but those are the ones that's broke the rules as well, going out and cutting air when everybody else were closed. Yeah, we've seen that um, on the different friends on social media, seeing that they had barbers coming around during the lockdown. Yeah, it's not, and 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 what happened with that then is, not only were they breaking 
physical rules, but then they broke the code with the bar with the other barbers. So yeah. barbers who used to probably follow these guys or look up to them, kind of just like they're not bothered anymore. It's uh, not something that they want to be associated with, and rightly so, you know. Yeah. Um, right, I do so. have a qu question about. Um, have you tried to style the hair with gloves on? Actually, drying it and putting the products in. How yeah. would you say what's the best way to do that? Because I'll be honest, I've I've actually struggled when we first started wearing gloves to style the hair. So I think there's one thing: one, making sure you got your gloves are half a size smaller, so the skin tight. Yep. But even then, I think if you put in a pom on, or if you put in a clay on, or if you put in dust on, I think your fingers feel that product, so you know what kind of pressure to put through the air. With gloves yeah. on, I think when you're doing a pomade, it kind of it don't flow as much. I yeah, think you're when right you're putting clay on, you want to get that real nice texture to it. You don't get it, it clumps up a bit more. Um, in the UK, we don't have to wear gloves to style air. Okay. So we're still allowed to put as products through as hands, and then you can feel it through the air. Um, but I don't think you're any different than to everybody else. I um, know. Oh, yeah. I think more you do it, more you'll get to know it. But I think you're not on your own there, where styling with gloves on has been difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Simon, do, do you think what do you think is going to happen next year? Honestly, what do you? How, how do you see the the whole uh, image of next year? Post, yeah, let's say so post COVID. I, if I'm really realistic and really honest about this. Um, I've been asked this question this morning. I don't think there's going to be many live events till probably April or May time. I think that's the first time we can expect people coming back in audiences uh, to watch any shows, uh, which is a bit scary. But I think if we don't want second spikes of this, and we, we've got to wait till there's some proper vaccines and there's a proper code where we can all feel a bit more confident from, then realistically, f looking at the demographics of all of this, I just can't see us doing live events till, till April, May next year. From an education point of view, I think the, the better platforms, the better masterclasses, uh, the better people who have got a dashboard that you can navigate around and get the best education from will be the ones that people go to. Uh, we've still got great products being launched. Um, when we launch those products as well, we're going to have educators that are going to show you how to use them. So I think we're very lucky that we're going to be at the forefront of launching products, which will allow us then to be the first barbers and hairdressers demonstrating them. Um, so that's going to keep us in front of everybody else. So that's how I see it, if I'm really honest. There's no good news. It's not like we're going to be back in January. Um, I think the first country that does it will be the bravest country to put an exhibition on or a show. Um, but for me, I, I'm, I'm hopefully, fingers crossed, looking at my uh, like April, May time before things start to get back to normal. It's already positive to think that uh, we're, the comeback is going to be strong. You know, you're, you're, the way you, the way you, you just uh, described it, it's like uh, when we come back, it's going to be strong. Yeah, it's going to be strong comeback. You have to think that way as well, and um, I think we're just getting very close to a second lockdown in the UK, um, which might not be as long, but I think the the government are going to pay people a lesson for going out all the time and to actually making the these um the way that we are moving forward it is it, gotta be the, the right way um so if we don't behave ourselves in the uk they will close us down but i think being positive for next year to say look we're looking at my april may time so you've got to focus on that you've got to get your head around that so i'm that's something i'm really positive about and looking forward to yeah, you know, uh, we've noticed that uh, it's been easy, not easy, but a bit easier for professionals to deal with it. Like they, they, they took this opportunity to work on themselves, to work on education, to, uh, you know, to get some time to learn something new. But what can we say to beginners, uh, like uh, the, the new beginners uh, for, the, for the moment, like getting this shock? Yeah, I think for the for the new beginners, it's difficult. What a difficult time to be have started your career in barbering. 
uh, or hairdressing. And I think it's it's important to keep linked into um, to to kind of basically link into your edu whoever's providing your education. Hopefully, they're providing videos and they're providing things online for them to go do that. Or you know, just just to, main thing is to hang in there. Is whatever information is given to you to do it. If you're asked to do assignments at home, do them to the best ability. Um, and I know it's not easy. And if all myself, Dan, Gassan, yourself, if you're starting off in your careers and this had happened, it's like a big block there to start with. Um, none of us have ever gone through this, have we? None of us have ever gone through this in his lifetime. So you imagine starting your career off. All I'm going to say to everybody out there who started the career off is hang in. Because once you get through this and you get back to colleges, you get back to your barber shops, get back to your hairdressing salons, and you can start your training. This is an amazing industry to be in. So it'll be a little blip that you'll look back and think in 10 years' time, oh, when I started my hairdressing or barbering career, we had COVID-19 and I couldn't train for, uh, you know, six months or 12 months. But wow, look at where I am now. And I think that's the way you've got to look at it. It's not the same for anybody. So you're all together. It's not like you've got it in Dubai and we've not got it here in the UK and because we've not got it in the UK they've not got it in China it's globally everywhere so everybody's been affected so we're all in the same boat together it's all about keeping this focused and making sure that your heart's still where it needs to be and if you've got them two combinations then you'll always be successful you know, recently, recently uh, all of us uh, uh, have become uh, barbers. I, I have become my barber uh, myself at home, for example. Uh, my mom also uh, at home. She 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 was cutting my dad's hair, and we're we're all we we are all following this road uh, right now. But what what can happen after that if if everyone is doing it? Everyone is the barber right now yeah i think we've said it a bit earlier that i think there's there's uh thousands of new barbers out there now that have yeah. never cut out but it's the same thing look at this well well restaurants have shut have you not been watching cooking programs and, and making your own gordon ramsay food and making your own yeah. jamie oliver food and becoming uh, almost like trainee chefs so i think every industry that's glamorous like barbering like hairdressing like cooking, uh, people have got a lot better at home at doing it. We're in a fortunate position where we manufacture products that help people to do that as well, as well as supporting the professional industry. Um, but yeah, there's so many barbers out there now. And, and I've watched some people online. They even know how to hold the tension properly on the skin. <laughs> and they're holding the clip. I'm thinking, have you had some training? And it's not. It's, it's, they've watched so many people online. That are actually doing it, doing it right, and 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 I can only relate this to watching cooking programs. Is that I've cooked stuff, and I think I've just done it like they've done it, and it and it does give you a buzz. And uh, we went out for a meal on Friday night, and then yesterday Sunday we were going to go out for a meal, and I ended up cooking at home, and it was as nice as if we went out for food. And that's I try and relate this into barbering. So if somebody's cut somebody's hair, it's like, do you know what? feels really good you've made a really good job of that or people's line the beards in and stuff and i think it never takes it away from going out or having your hair cut by a professional but sometimes i think people can do a bit more than what they were doing beforehand yeah we call it wannabe no. wannabe barbers out there <laughs> yeah that, that's me <laughs> So if we, if, we so if, we, if we will speak about one more thing, um, wearing masks all the time, it's became hectic for bearded guys. Yeah. And um, for us barbers, we needed to, to come up with a new way to, um, how can I say that, to help people to avoid all these problems, all issues they're getting through wearing the mask. Is that the same thing happening yeah. back yeah. there where you're staying or do you guys facing the same issue or people just running for a full clean shave to avoid the having a beard? Like me, myself, I'm wearing it and I used to have a bigger beard than this, but since I used to wear the mask, I started getting a little bit of curve and it used to be, and I started being a little bit hectic, especially with wearing the products, putting the oils, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What do you, do 
do you guys yeah, have the same, same thing? Same or? Thing. And, and I think when we first opened up the shaving um, facial um, services were weren't introduced back into the businesses for about six, seven weeks after lockdown uh, came up for, for barbers. On the 4th of July, we opened back up as barber shops. And I think it was probably um, the end of July before you could do a facial service. Uh, they started back up again. Uh, but I think lots of people have probably, like you have and I have, I've gone a lot shorter on my beard uh, just because it's been easier to, to keep up. And I think a lot of people have done the same. I have to say as well, you know, it is a requirement for everybody in the UK, if you're having your hair cut, that the client has to wear a mask up until I'm having a, uh, some facial services. which kind of defeats the object, really, of of, of all of that. Um I have to say, on the UK education, on the 6th of September, I did an air coat and I had to wear a mask and a visor and I really tip my hat off to every single barber and hairdresser who's had to work through working with a mask and a visor on for the last 10, 15 weeks. It is so tough. Of course, because, so you, tough. Uh, because as a barber, you're almost wearing it for how many hours are there, like 10 hours at least? At yeah. the end of the day, it became really tough. I remember one day going back home and honestly, hand and heart, me going back home, doing whatever I have to wash my hands, whatever, chilling and after like 15 minutes touching my face and I realized that, that the mask is still on, you know, even at home, I even forgot to remove it. That's that's where we reach. Like it's, it's being really hectic wearing it. It's difficult it's, to breathe and it's, it's not easy. I know it's, it's for our uh, own good. Still, you know, it's not an easy job. Something I saw in an advertisement of the day, and I think it's called Clear Mask, and it's actually a visor, but it's got the goggles built into it, and it just came around here, and it just looked really cool. You couldn't even tell you got anything on your face. It fitted. So I think going back to when we first opened back up, we had these big... I, I, I tried it. I tried it. I We have that at the shop. I tried it. But the thing is, while you're doing the fades, it's still you're facing... It's blurry, you know? It's not yeah. as clean. It's not as clean. It's not yeah. as clean. Yeah. I think you've done great jobs. Everybody's done the great jobs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Every barber out there. Um, and I think that's what makes me a little bit different is that I'm not just talking about it and, and leading education. I'm actually still doing it as well, so I can relate to you. And that's why I've tried a few haircuts with a visor and a mask on and glasses. And as soon as you take a deep breath, all your glasses steam up and then you, you, you're you resetting again. And then after one haircut, you know, I had to make sure that my visor were clean. Um, I'm quite funny with smells as well, so I want to make sure everything's fresh all the time. And I think at one point I put my mask back up and it just it just smelt, smelt of Tom Ford. Uh, black orchid so the the, the after sh the, the other toilet were going in and i'm like one minute i can't breathe because it had been on my skin it smelled that did you get but, uh, did you get a hair down the mask as well no because so, there's been times that i've i've actually looked in the mirror after and i've actually got a beard and it's not from my facial hair well that'll be the first time you've got a beard Dan. <laughs> i know yeah <laughs> i might do it more often but no, I think it's been tough for everybody. I take my hat off. It's been a real difficult time. And look how we've all got on with it. Look at this industry as a whole. It's improved yeah. so much. I know it's like National Barber Day soon. And, uh, you know, I said to you, Sarah, when I spoke to you about things, is is the education that we've done from a, from a brand point of view to make barbers elevated. What barbers have done from a social media, telling everybody we've got rock star barbers out there now, charge big money. And then from a, a just a general PR point of view is, that that makes people more appeal to come into this industry because there's a lot more about it and look how everybody's just got on with it you've had to wear masks and visors if we said this to you in december in your busy period oh by you know by february march time next year you're all going to be wearing visors and masks you just said no you've got on with it so great mentality by everybody globally and uh, i would say at least 80 percent of people who are professionals out there have done the right thing. We're just let down by other people who, for whatever reason, have not stuck by the rules. Okay, and the guys uh, over here, uh, Ghassan and Dan, uh, have been doing a good job in education. But uh, just to, and uh, we don't want to take longer uh, time with you. We know you have a lot 
just we need a quick advice, uh, something motivational to to everyone, and especially regarding education, because it's the it is uh, the time for education right now. It is the time for online and learning and new stuff. What what do you promise uh, also? Well, we're working very hard. I just want to tell the guys, Gassan and Dan, as well. We're working very hard. Uh, Lance has just signed off a big project in the US for us to do something on, on a real smart platform, a real good virtual platform that will stand out from everybody else's where we can get barbers and hairdressers subscribing monthly to come into the dashboard and click and watch it. I think we've shown this weekend by putting a global event on with different barbers and hairdressers across the world over 24 hours, Trevor Studs did an amazing job. And I think up to this morning before I started my meetings, we'd had over 10,800 views over the weekend. Um, so over the week, you could see that easily increasing to probably 250,000 views. Trust me, when we get the education on a platform digitally, virtually, we'll do it better than everybody else. We'll be able to invite, because we're global, not local, we're going to be able to invite our global guests to get involved with that. And Dubai is no, no different to that, to do that. So I want to put a message out there is that, you know, it's one of my sayings and it probably I, I've got out of saying it because I've not had any live audiences, but we are global, not local. That is our difference. We're 101 years into the making here at Wall. We're going to keep moving forward. We've got some fantastic clippers coming out. We've got the best educators around the world that are going to be involved in whatever the next step is in education. But forget all that. I'm a live person. And so I'm going to push everything possible to get us back live, to get us back there safe in probably April, May next year. You know, And what a better place to kick that off than Beauty World in, in May in Dubai. Well, it's a, it's a dream now to hope that that comes off and, uh, you know, we, we can do something fantastic there. And, uh, you know, Dubai's, you know, guys, not only do I love working there, but it's my favourite uh, holiday destination as well. Um, so from that point of view, um, I always hold you guys in, in high esteem because I could come and live there. I love, the, I love the Dubai people. I love working with my colleagues out there, whether you're from... Canuck or whether you're from Bahrain or whether you're from uh, wherever you you know I think everybody comes together it's just a fantastic place to be involved with um, so we will be back and when we come back we're going to be better and stronger than what we were before when we come back we're going to have five four three four new additions to new products fetch that with new educators Whatever happens in 2021, you can guarantee we're going to be at the spearhead of uh, what's going to happen in this industry. Perfect. Great. Great. Do you guys have any more questions? No, I think that's it. Thank you for uh, speaking to us today. It's a pleasure, guys. I wish I was there all week and I wish I could go to the Carlton Ritz for brunch on Friday and sit down and have a few beers with you all and have a chat with you but i'm sure that that's going to happen Thank you very so much we'll keep positive and uh, i look forward yeah, to where uh, we are we look are look forward to seeing you all very soon we look forward we look forward to seeing you too we adios amigos <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you look after, after you yourself see you soon bye bye, bye, -bye.